Boom! Hello, 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 and welcome. It's yet another episode of Short Film Roundup. Also known as the Talkies. I'll hear on the Talkies. <laughs> yeah, it is the Short Film Roundup version of the Talkies where we get together and analyze three short films that have been submitted to us from our good friends over at Reddit. You can find that at where? Uh, r slash Carmen Line Studios. Yeah, that's where it is. R slash Carmen Line Studios. <laughs> Linked in the description. So if you want to submit your film, you can go down there and do that. That's right. If you want us to praise or tear apart or both your piece of uh, hard work <laughs> that you poured your soul and life into, submit it there. Yeah. Tear uh, to shreds. We will. Uh, our, our normal disclaimer for the long version, go back to our first short film roundup, but the short version is uh, we've, we've been there, we've done this, uh, we've made movies that have sucked as well, and uh, so any um, harsh criticism we give here is harsh criticism of ourselves as well, and uh, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to be honest about the films we watch, Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to just give our feelings towards the film and critique it the best we can. We can't yep. help you if we're yes men. Yeah. Uh, also, this episode is about three days late, so... Yeah, Ooh. oops. Yeah. yeah. Our bad. Uh, oh, things, well. Things, yeah, anyway. Uh, we'll, no. we'll continue on our regular <laughs> schedule. One of the short films submitted was three days long. Yeah, it was yeah, like, it was true. a 70... 72 yeah, hour film. So. <laughs> yeah, a 72 hour long short film. We yeah. won't talk about that one. <laughs> short film. Yeah, it was. we decided to disqualify it for length <laughs> after watching it. Yeah. After watching it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, what, so do we got? what do we got, man? We're going to go with Donuts and Death, the Larry Henderson story. Oh, really? Alrighty. Written and directed by Peter Amy. All right. A M E Y? Amy? Sure. Some, yeah. You can correct us. Um, in comments yeah go watch it it's uh it's really short come right back link below enjoy Welcome back. We made it. <laughs> uh, yes, Kenny, what did you think of Donuts and Death, the Larry Henderson story? Uh, it's had some very genuinely funny moments. Uh, we all la laughed out loud. We did. Uh, the, the, the consensus, though, the, the, the first thought I had, and I think both of you had the same thought at the same time, was I've made this movie before. And I think everyone who's ever found themselves in possession of a camera and some good friends... Uh, who gets the bug and wants to make a movie usually starts off with this movie. Yeah. What exactly do you mean by this movie? Well, it's that's a good question. How to put that into words? What was so, it? Is it the movie comedy that, elements? What was the movie that you just came out with? Came out with? Yeah. That you made with your friends not too long ago. Not Diamond Vacuum, but the other one. The other one. Oh, hit the the show. Oh, Good yeah. Morning, Good Night, Late Night Show. There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. It's like not only have we all made this film i'm currently making <laughs> this film right so i mean it's it, it's it's funny you use the fact that it's funny to really polish up all the all the shortcomings that you have as amateur filmmakers right like i mean you can really get away with anything mm. um you know it, it, if, if you're missing a prop you can literally hold up empty hands and write prop here in yeah. text because it's that kind of comedy, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, it was genuinely funny. I, I guarantee you it was more funny for them than it is for the audience because it's made for them, really. Yeah. Um, technically speaking, I mean, it's an amateur film. The, the thing that could have made this go a thousand yards further would have been a microphone. Sound. You know? Yeah. They needed yeah, a yeah. microphone. Yeah. yeah. Sound would have done it. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I genuinely haven't laughed this hard at a movie in literally years. Holy cow! They are going to write that on their poster now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Taylor Schofield yeah. gave Man, us a laugh. I've never seen Taylor <laughs> say anything that definitive. <laughs> wow! I thought it was very funny. I was in literally in tears. Jeez! Or, 
a portion well, was, of I that think it was, I yeah. think it was genuity, right? Yeah. It was what you're, what you're laughing at. Yeah. Yeah. It was just really funny when like it starts immediately and then there's this music and then they do the Monty Python cutting away and the music drops out. That was funny. And then they, they cut through the tape. Yeah. Cutting through the tape alone gimmick. is funny. That was a great gimmick. And then yeah. the guy goes and patches it up. I mean, that's all this kind of like just absurdist, absurdist humor, but like with deadpan delivery yeah that is like my favorite kind of humor there is and I, I thought it was hilarious yeah so no it was funny i thought it was really funny it was funny yeah i liked it um as far as i guess criticisms definitely audio was all over the place yeah some great lines we didn't get to hear yeah right yeah right i couldn't follow the plot at all i had no idea really what the plot was other than like it was a murder mystery. There was ghosts. There wasn't ghosts. There it was, was an there, inside job. I the whole didn't time. even know there was ghosts. That, that was one of the jokes that they thought was really funny. Oh. Yeah, you know, I mean, you could just tell there was just a lot of things where they're writing a script and yeah. they went, oh, and this, and then this, you know. And yeah, I mean, like you said, we've all made this film. <laughs> I definitely, it definitely reminded me of my films, and uh, uh, we did a lot of jokes for ourselves in there that weren't you know we weren't delivering them for an audience we just told them because we thought they were funny yeah 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 Yeah. and yeah so there's some of those jokes didn't land perfectly not every joke landed the the story is that a detective decides to hire a private investigator but he doesn't wear his glasses and so he reads the newspaper advertisements upside down and he accidentally hires a cleaner oh who happens to have an immunity to rat poison (laughs) <laughs> that's funny too You're right <laughs> that's pretty good i i did i really liked that introduction though of the rat poison thing yeah that, that was, was good like, oh it's rat poison <laughs> <laughs> rat poison oh no <laughs> yeah I, I i totally missed the story yeah i did too uh, actually and i think that is right because of the audio i couldn't hear what they were saying same here yeah same here send these guys a microphone <laughs> hey <laughs> uh yeah not every joke landed some like I'm not a, a lot of the fourth wall stuff felt like super easy to do, so it just wasn't that funny. Because I when you say easy to, I, I I like you to explain that a little sure. bit more because I don't really know what you mean by that. So like we need some jokes, we need something funny that we can do. Look at the camera and wink, and it's fourth wall breaking. Right, or That's, say turn down the music and yeah, cut yeah. to the guy in the editing bay who turns down the music. It's, yeah, super. What easy. he means by easy is that we've seen it a hundred times. Yeah. And, it's the first thing you think to do. Well, so like, it's just it, basic. I, I'm just I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but like, like uh, we did this music turning down gag in our own media in WTF. In but it was in one. a podcast. <laughs> now, who's done that in a podcast? <laughs> but no we didn't. One. We didn't do it because we were the first. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what uh, what are you referencing. I don't know what part you're referencing. Oh, we make that exact same gag in episode four of WTF M Night Shyamalan. Oh, and shut the music. Please off. turn off. Yeah. He yeah. knew. He just wanted to advertise the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and that is easy. The critically. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, podcast. Wait, I wasn't there for by the that way, decision. That wasn't funny. I was. <laughs> I was not around for that. And oh. I actually did think it was funny. I don't know, it's off track. I'm just, the the, the point, the reason why I bring it up is because I don't I don't think being easy or not being easy is what makes something funny or not. Uh, sure, I mean we may have seen the same delivery thousands of times, but uh, maybe it is it has less to do with the t- amount of times that we've seen it before, and more to do with how we see it and what context we see it. Right, and the, I think the context in here yeah. was that clearly these guys know how to write gags, and they're and they're the dialogue actually carried the weight for for all those gags really really well right and even some of the visual gags like cutting the caution tape right were sort of like up here that was good stuff and then the fourth wall break was sort of more like down here so was it because the fourth wall break didn't have anything to do with what they were doing on set but just like by the way yeah like it was just thrown in right yeah in. see now that makes that makes a lot of sense to me. It, it was like they were saying like this is funny Right. It's it's like so, the equivalent of like if they looked to the camera and said this is funny. Right. <laughs> right. So it's so it's a gag for gag's sake. Yeah. Is what it is. Which actually if they literally looked at the camera and then just looked at the camera and deadpan said this is funny. Right. That would have been That would funny. actually be funnier. Yeah. It's because it, again it's because of the context. Yeah. Yeah. So the no context for that joke makes it funny. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Good job, guys. Yeah. yeah well, um, I, I made would, something funny. I would say, yeah, the, you know, it's actually interesting. Not many, uh, I, I don't want to say this is a student film, but not many student films um, have made me laugh, you know, when they're right. trying to be comedies. Yeah. This one was, like, genuinely hilarious. Yeah, it was funny. Um, and I think the cinematography could have been uh, more poignant. Uh, could have understood more of what was going on. Yeah, and that's what makes these this sort of film. I want to come up with a name for this genre. Yeah, um, it what it's what makes them simultaneously so good and so bad at the same time, is that uh, the brand of comedy gives you leeway to get away with just about anything. Yeah, right. So it doesn't matter that the actors. Um, age slash life experience does not fit the characters that right. they're playing. Right. It doesn't matter that the camera work isn't well, great. Well, I think the I think the camera work would have been it, it would have had, made it better. Yeah. I, I'm not saying like it, like the like the sound like because the sound would have been would have made it more easier to understand. I guess same with the camera work is that it would yeah. it would have made it better to understand. Yeah. Would have made it better for sure, but. Uh, you can kind of get away with murder uh. as a filmmaker <laughs> um, when when you're doing this kind of like alternate world where fourth wall breaking happens sort of comedy. Yeah. Uh. Which is why so many, it's, that's why amateurs do it. Yeah, right. You know, that's right. why you go to that. It's like. See, I want to see a movie where it's this brand of humor, but it's like shot like perfectly that's like Monty Python expertly well that's shot. Uh, Edgar Wright also and yeah. Edgar, yeah 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 um, yeah well there you go well we expect great things from you guys yeah good definitely stuff. good yeah. job get a microphone mmm these are delicious rat poison oh well it's happened before and if it hasn't killed me yet I don't think it ever will. <laughs> on to the next one. Next one we have Meant to Be. Meant to Be. Written by, or written and directed by Hamza Zubida. Right. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Yep, we mess up names here. I'm definitely saying it right. Every name's wrong. <laughs> Again, go watch it. Link is in the description. Come right back. Taylor, what did you think of this movie? Um, I thought it was an idea that was interesting, but I don't know if it was a fully realized idea, an idea that was fully uh, ex uh, executed to to make it understandable. Yeah. Um, because m me and D have different readings of the Completely film. Completely different interpretations. Yeah. Uh, Why don't you spell those out? Yeah. And so, so I think... What I got from the film was it was these two people who were in the same situation of they want to kill themselves. This guy has a noose around his neck and a suicide note. But then for whatever reason, he has second thoughts and he decides not to and then gets some sort of either uh, divine inspiration that this girl is on the train tracks doing the same thing where she's going to kill herself and he decides he needs to go save her. Then he saves her, and uh, they have a relationship, maybe? I don't know. They're holding hands afterwards, and that's it. So I think the idea was, like, some... It was meant to be. It was destiny that he was there on that day to kill himself, but decided not to, and in the process, saved a life. That was, like, the whole thing. But I'm not sure how clear that comes across, because... There's a few shots where they're building up to this, where they have the match cuts. There's like two match cuts of their faces where it's like, okay, these people are linked. But then there's this really abrupt moment where the the guy it just basically like looks up and it's just like, oh, 
I know that she's over there and I'm going to run. And he just kind of runs for no, we don't see any divine intervention. We don't see his motivation for that to happen. He just somehow knows. And I think that's the key element that was missing. Um, what did, what were you, what were your thoughts on, so, on everything? Uh, so I'll just say my my interpretation first um, was that the the I I got that this guy was uh, was trying to kill himself, and then um, we see a match cut from him to the girl. Uh, at first thing I thought was, is he now the girl? Something because <laughs> uh, it comes a perfect match cut of the eyes, and then she goes to kill herself, and then we come back to the guy, and I'm like, oh, this is hype happened simultaneously. We see the guy then just yelling into oblivion through uh, trying to destroy stuff. Um, go back to the girl. The girl is now trying to kill herself in front of a train. The train is not there, and then it is there. Um, then he, then like you said, it abruptly cuts to, to him running to her, and then they walk away holding hands. Um, to, to me, that says that when they walked away holding hands, that they were, that they already knew each other, because I don't see why anyone would hold hands otherwise. Mm. Um, unless yeah. she felt like he really did save him, save her. Um, I feel like anyone who's intervening with a suicide is seen as the bad guy. I wouldn't say it's just seen as the savior. Mm. Um, but I, f- I felt like the that's filmmaker... Just, that's a weird interpretation. Well, it, it's because Spoiling someone... a suicide yeah, is, so is the if, bad guy? If someone is trying to commit suicide and then someone else intervenes... From the storytelling perspective, you're saying, "Wow, that's the good. That's a good person. You know, they stopped them, so that other person from dying." Yeah. But the person who's trying to die is doing it for a reason. They're going to be. Resentful. Oh, except right. that 99 percent of suicide attempts are no, no, no. That's just different want though. To be stopped. That's different though, because because if you're if you're attempting suicide and then it doesn't work because of of elements beyond your control or something like that, but it's just because of yourself, then then that warrants the person to go. Oh, I better I better reconsider things. But so you're saying that in your interpretation, the person interrupting a suicide attempt is a villain. Generally, uh, no, I'm not saying that that it's it's in here, but that's, that's a whole different discussion. I think what you're saying. <laughs> no, we're wait, not, wait, we're wait, not talking about that. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> All right. I wanna, wait. I actually do want to say this. I want to understand sure. that you're saying this because they're holding hands at the end, and that's hard for you to grasp because, because she be she, she would be. I think she, if they like didn't mad. know each other, yeah, I, yeah, I don't feel like she, they'd be holding hands at the end. Maybe. I can understand. I don't think they'd be holding hands at the end so, in any way unless they knew each other beforehand. So I just want to so think s- that was a miscalculation, right? So I just want to say that because they were holding hands at the end makes me think they were somehow connected. I see. Um, and the fact that he was yelling and uh, and trying to destroy like a stump or just getting anger out was that he was trying to to just vent yeah. after he figured out he couldn't kill himself. So that him existing in his own world and her existing in hers made me think that they're somehow um, doing this simultaneously. He goes to stop her and then they leave. I, I don't think there was any divinity in that and anything like that. Um, Cause I didn't get, I didn't get that from what the visuals no were. <laughs> Cause the visuals didn't tell me that. Yeah. It's my turn. Go. Okay, uh, I can't take a side with either of you guys because I, I just felt like there wasn't enough there to really grasp onto and put a story together. I felt like uh, we saw lots of images that carried lots of emotion and, yeah. and that they did a good job with, with making pr- provocative imagery and using a snowy landscape and a forest and trees are a great way to do that. You can almost not go wrong with those elements. I'm sure they didn't even do that on purpose either. It's probably just what was available, but it looked great. And it makes for, again, that's like stark contrast, right? With, so that's great. Um, but, uh, there just, there just wasn't enough there to stitch it all together. And my favorite shot of the whole thing is probably the one that makes the least sense, which is the final shot or where you see he's standing there with a pocket knife open closes it and walks away and it's this long thoughtful shot it's a beautiful shot uh but i i I have no idea how it ties into the story if i had to stretch like really stretch i could come up with a narrative here but i i have no reason to believe my interpretation is actually part of the story what i would say is maybe maybe she's maybe they had a relationship 
she read his suicide note and is going to kill herself because she mm. read his suicide note or vice versa Romeo or and Juliet. somehow both at the same time like a Romeo and Juliet thing like they're yeah. killing each other because they believe they both are on their way to kill themselves yeah uh, and then he changes his mind and and stops her how he knows that at that very moment she's killing herself using a train which my god it's brutal. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty brutal. Yeah. First of all, it's it's dicey. You don't know if it's going to work, especially if you're standing there 100 yards <laughs> out with your hands up. Uh, trains do have brakes. <laughs> You'd probably want to throw yourself in front of the train if you effectively wanted to kill yourself. Which, Good advice. Again, scream. <laughs> well, Good. my point is, is that that screams to me of the I need someone to intervene in my life type of suicide gotcha. attempt. Um, That's true. Which, That's a good thought. Which is a thing, you yeah. know. Um, I don't know. Again, it's just pure conjecture because uh, there's not enough right. there. It's not a story. This, so that's but what, there is emotion. That's my biggest thing with it is that I, I don't feel there was enough enough communicated. Right. Yeah. So I think you have to come down on a side, and we've we've debated this with our own films. Yeah. Is that are you simply trying to show emotions like a tone poem? Or are you trying to tell a story? Right. And you give less on one and more with the other. Exactly. And this was definitely more towards tone than it was towards story. And you know what? I think he. I think there was trying to be a story. I think there was definitely a story he had that he wanted to tell. Yeah. But I think he was literally missing like two key shots. Right. That conveyed two pivotal plot elements that just were absent from yeah. the film. The, that being the, the fact that the, he was close enough to her to see her or something the idea is like why d does he know she's there yeah and why does he go to help her right the, that needed to be there yeah and it, if you were trying to tell a story then that needed to be there to make any sense of any of it and if it was like a tone poem purely then uh i feel like it could have I don't know. I don't really have anything to say about it on that end of the spectrum. It, it is go one way or the other. And I, th I think it's really hard to, to say because, cause like, we talk about how certain shots mean certain things, and he's definitely trying to use visual storytelling in here. And we definitely see that. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say exactly what you should do without s knowing the intent, mm -hmm. you know? So... Yeah. I think I think I think better, more understanding of what cinematography means. I think is what what we need here. Could use better sound mix too. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually one part where the, he's running, and they they kept the sound of the camera. Yeah, in there you could like hear a tripod rattling around. Yeah, that yeah. was that was. Odd. But I also feel like they did some foley stuff. Uh, I felt that way too. Her footprint, her footsteps when she was walking across the train track. See, the proximity seemed off. It did. So same with the last shot in the snow crunch. Yeah. To uh, nitpick a little further. Um, yeah, let's nitpick this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you signed up for this, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the opening shot. There was a few shots where it's the guy hanging himself, and the camera basically does this like tilt down, yep. up, yep. down, mm -hmm. up, down, uncut. And I think that's fine if you're gonna do like a long shot of like multiple compositions and like flowing and stuff, but it felt more like um, that sequence would have been better suited for editing of like actually, you know, planning out the shots. Cause it conveyed yeah. to me that like they showed up on the day and didn't plan out like a shot list or something. And that's they were just exactly, kind of like, well, that's exactly well, what yeah. I got, you know, because they, he, when he went down and then mi went down for the second time and missed him putting the paper into his pocket. Mm. And I'm like, that tells me that 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 was a mistake, but you kept it in there because you don't really care that much about it. Yeah, yeah, and act, it actually gave me the sense that at at first the sense it gave me was that they were trying to convey someone was standing there watching him. It oh, gave okay. me the feeling of an observer who was looking up and down. Um, you know, when, maybe when you, that's when, the divine intervention. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but when you do, when you you got to be careful with how you use your your handheld shots right especially if you stick with it for a long time because if you're not careful the the observing eye becomes a character 
becomes right. a person. Well, that's exactly what. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is what this is what uh, David Fincher talks about a lot is uh, removing the humanity from his films. And actually, I don't think David Fincher knows more about cinematography than he thinks he does, um, because a lot of times he what he says is that he wants the camera to move almost omnisciently so that there's no human intervention and that we don't get we don't read anything that we're not supposed to read from the camera. What he doesn't realize is that that can be read in itself as a personality. He has this he has tracking shots in like a panic room where he goes he just has this free floating camera that goes through even through furniture to get to the a door and then we go that. up. But the thing is we're seeing this all seeing eye and it makes it makes the whole thing feel creepy. Yeah. Because cameras don't move that way. Because humans don't move that way. It, we don't go like this. It yeah. actually draws more <laughs> attention to it. It draws more attention. Yeah. That's the thing. Ironic. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. So, like, so, so, like, uh, exactly what you said. You know, know why you're doing a shot. Yeah, you know. Yep, I, uh, it's a hard lesson learned after many, many, many times making the same mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Here too, yeah. you got to really, really put um, intention behind your shot list. Yep. <laughs> All right, should we move on to our next one? Cool. Next one. Next one is Blink, which is produced and written and directed. That's weird that produces in there. By Tom Casper. Tom Casper. Uh, it is one minute long. Yeah. Blink. Check it Watch out. It. Come back. Watch it. We are. That was well, quick. it was only a minute long. It was only a minute. Yeah. So. And a very efficient use of a minute. This is absolutely my favorite kind of storytelling for a short film because it uh, cause it uses the minute to tell a story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, I felt like yeah. this had an assignment. Right. Uh, I feel like this was like a, a challenge one minute film festival type right. of thing. That Something kind of thing. like that. Yeah. Because uh, it was... It was if if not his his intention certainly was to make a one minute film right yeah right um, it definitely wasn't bigger that he condensed and if it was then it was on an abstract he, scale he conveyed a large story <laughs> mm-hmm. he conveyed uh, a man is in love he goes off to war he comes back injured he's injured at war he comes back and is uh, disabled and loses his love and kills himself. And told in an almost artistic nature. Yeah. Told in a minute without any real dialogue. Yeah. One yeah. shot. One shot. Tec- yeah. is, well, it had shots within well, a shot. Eight yeah. shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did a good job of, of putting those, the imagery inside the eye like that. It looked really nice. Yeah. Very smooth. Uh, seamless. I, I would say there's a, there's a way this could be made a lot better. And I, I hate to say this because, again, it's a it's a individual that's making what they want to make and it's how beautiful. do you they, yeah. they did a good job and they did a good job um and the, the so the first thing that i came away with was um i'm watching these shots as they take place inside this guy's eye and i'm like oh i get it the shots inside of his eye are supposed to then demonstrate something to the reason why he killed himself but i didn't realize this until about halfway through so the first three shots or so i felt like were aesthetics they were just like playing off uh, shots, and they're more about the sound that's coming through. And I'm like, oh, and then, but then the film ends. I'm like, oh crap! I was supposed to actually really look at those other shots. The reason why I didn't understand that in the very beginning is because the eye in the frame, uh, although centered, is extremely tiny. So because it's so tiny, it doesn't say, draw all of your attention here. This is the pivotal right. moment of everything. Right, yeah. so so I'm kind of if you're looking around the frame, right? So I'm like looking at his blood. You may miss the half a second image exactly. in the eye. So there, there's an old graphic design term about uh, the biggest object in the scene is the most important, 
and it definitely holds true for things like uh, in film also, or yeah. any visual medium. And it doesn't right. just have to be big. All it has to be is contrasted. And the thing that was taking place inside of his eye, all the scenes, although colored, weren't enough contrast to draw your attention away from the uh, from the outside. Yeah. So although this may not bother people, it is just it's it's a thing about graphic design that definitely communicates better. Uh, I think you're right. It was it was. Uh, it was hard to see, yeah. Even on our bigger screen, right? right. Uh, so, um, <laughs> yeah, that could have been done better. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, but I, I, to be contrarian, I didn't have any issue whatsoever. I didn't miss anything the first time through. The fact that one third of us did yeah. have issue tells you that there was some form of communication right. error there. It's not a full universal thing, right? Statistically yeah. proven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, you could say the same thing for someone who decides to go to the bathroom in the middle of a movie or eat their popcorn and miss a shot. Sure. I mean, you could say that exact same thing, but then that film isn't made for that kind of audience. So right, so that's true. If this, anyone takes a bite of their popcorn while watching this movie, you will miss the. <laughs> you will miss everything. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> that's on the person though, because they're not that, paying attention. That's, but that's again, that's Don't going serve into popcorn. Yeah. That's uh, that's that going one way or the other on this. No popcorn. Yeah. That's rule. saying that if you're a viewer, then you're expected to behave a certain way. Mm. Um, and well, every, I mean, I think I think it's pretty reasonable to expect that you're going to watch the movie and pay attention to the movie. Well, sure, but again, drawing your eye to different parts of the screen. Yeah, are I agree. I think different. that's I think that is important. Yeah, you almost need to wave a flag somehow. You do. You know, if, yeah. if you're going to stick with the small eye, if that's what you the need movie something is about, right. to draw you to that point. Yeah, you know, um, like like it could have been like. Instead of a, a pull, like a pull back, it should have like just stayed going complete. in. Oh, in? Yeah, could have gone all the way in. Yeah. See that going well, in? Well, I think that yeah. he he had this idea for a very dramatic moment where we've pulled out just enough to now see the drop of blood come down the forehead. Yeah. Or if you were pushing in, that might not have worked. It well, should have been just funny. static, just static, extreme close up, and yeah. then the blood drips like over his eyebrow. Or see something. that that would be even better, I think. And, and it's because I don't think the reveal happened as as good as i think we think he thinks <laughs> um <laughs> that that it should have been so, so like like you said he's doing a dramatic back yeah uh, dolly back yeah until we see the blood on his face and we're like oh that guy killed himself when it's kind of obvious after there's motionless after a while we're like oh okay well he's definitely not living <laughs> this isn't like something that's he's just he's gonna get up after this you know fair i think it was pretty obvious yeah but it was a good movie. Funny story. When it was walked, a funny story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the punchline at the end. When he killed himself. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Funny story is we watched this right after watching uh, Death and Donuts. Yeah. And um, which, like we said, needed a microphone. Right. So we had cranked the audio up. <laughs> they opened up with a gunshot. All the yeah. way. And then they opened this one out with a gunshot, and I nearly fell out of my chair. Just, it was so loud. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the rest of the movie was actually kind of quiet, too. So, yeah, yeah, it was just whispers. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think maybe they could have just bring the gunshot down a bit. <laughs> I would say increase in contrast is still something that needs to be really, really looking forward to. Or really looking to. There, there's something that I can't remember. I, I learned it from. It was from a film person. They said, if you're going to do something in your film, you know, do it all the way. Mm -hmm. Never just half measures. Um, that was Gus Fring. <laughs> yes. Actually, no, that was uh, Gus Mike. Fring. Oh, it was Mike. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Full ass all the time. Never <laughs> half ass. That Full was ass. That was Devon Keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely an important thing to, to think about. Um, think about how to draw an eye to an eye. Well, and how eye, to get those sh just in an eye. Those shots inside of his eye. Yeah. Even getting those ones like absolutely pivotally more contrasted, yeah. so that like like I understood the very very last shot where she's leaving. She's a silhouette in a doorway. Like just with a simple glance, you know, going like this, you could understand exactly what's happening because it's so contrasted. I think he did a good job at picking images that are easy to tell what's happening yeah yeah and he did and i think it should have been more to, more than that yeah, yeah. 
but but it was definitely good and, and the reason why i go so harsh is because i want this to be even more perfect because yeah. that it, right now it's pretty much as good as you can get pretty dang close you know? yeah. yeah i really have it, almost nothing to say it's really it's, hard yeah. to tell a story in a minute um so good job yeah yeah hats off i don't have a hat but hats off <laughs> take off your hat take off your hat take it off take it off have we said hats off <laughs> hats off <laughs> come on do it thank you hats off <laughs> hats off <laughs> Hashtag on. Thank yes. you. Yes. So does that uh, conclude it? I think it does. <laughs> I think that makes up our short film roundup for this week. Alrighty. Cool. Like we said before, if you want us to give this same uh, harsh, traumatizing harsh criticism <laughs> to your short film, <laughs> submit it over at r slash Carmen Line Studios, and we'll be happy to watch your movie and talk about it. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, what films are we covering next can you look that up wow we can quick? actually do that yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's all planned out our next episode <laughs> got a long waiting list <laughs> our next episode for thursday not too long just a couple oh weeks. that's <laughs> it's just like that's in three days it's in three days <laughs> it is yeah, yeah I fell a little behind so yeah. our, our next episode this thursday we're seeing the cinema the cinematic hostage written mm-hmm. by david murphy mm-hmm. perception written directed and edited by Graham Burrell mm-hmm. and Can by Zachary J. Zifferjohn. Yeah. Zephyr, Zifferjohn. And uh, all the links to those are on the thread at our subreddit. So if you want to get a head start on check that, you can go watch now. them now. Yeah. yeah. And then check out our episode on the 7th. Yep. Sounds good. Very cool. And uh, later this week, we're seeing Ocean's 8. Really? Yeah. We are. That's what's on Friday. Really? Yep. And then Movie Pass will and, disintegrate. And this may be our last time using Movie Pass. So. And we'll have to pay for Incredibles too. So <laughs> fine, fine with me. I don't want to <laughs> pay for movies. <laughs> I wouldn't have paid for upgrade. No. Uh no. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have paid for half the movies we've seen for the talkies, but Can I, I'm gonna raise some. Uh, how, how many yeah. how many movies would Taylor have paid for? I don't know. That we saw for talkies. How many would we have made him pay for us, you mean? No, I mean like <laughs> most of, some of a lot of them were Marvel films. Uh, no, oh yeah, I yeah, wouldn't have seen any of them. Oh, none, just none, none of the movies. Yeah, but for the talkies, <laughs> we're still gonna pay for these things. Shape yeah. of Water. Just because we, yeah. I'd see. It. I would have seen a handful of them. Um, I want to raise a question okay. about this Friday's talkies, where mm. you said we're seeing Ocean's There's Eight. Oh, so, Friday. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, Friday. Doing it Friday. It releases on Monday. That's right. Um and. There's this little movie coming out called Hereditary. Oh yes, oh. that's also. I'd out rather this week. see that. I forgot about that. I would too. So I think uh, we can leave it up to the Double audience. Feature. Okay. Double feature. Do you Double want feature? to see us cover Ocean's Eight or Hereditary? Both. Double feature. <laughs> Ocean's Eight, Hereditary, or Adrift. Both. <laughs> Adrift. <laughs> Adrift. Or we can watch uh, Upgrade again. <laughs> but we can't because movie pass. Not with movie pass, so <laughs> leave a comment. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time on the talkies. On the talkies. <laughs> Anyone who's following us doesn't know what this means. <laughs> yeah, we're just doing See, see motions Once upon a time, we used to all have yerba mate. We'd all crack them open. That's when they still sponsored us. That's when they sponsored us. us. Yeah. But no more sponsors. We're not sponsored anymore. You know, we actually might get sponsored <laughs> by your Pomate. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't well, that be cool? Then we can afford to upgrade our studio. Yeah. Because uh, right now, that water sound you hear all the time. It's pretty annoying. It's because we're on the it's third floor. we have a restaurant. That's we're on the third <laughs> floor of a dingy old apartment <laughs> complex. It's filled with rats and roaches yeah. in the middle of Brooklyn. <laughs> And the pipes make Brooklyn. all kinds of noise. I guess we're in Brooklyn. Orangevale, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, we are Brooklyn natives from the way we speak. <laughs> right. The water annoys us as much as it annoys you. Probably more. I'm sure they don't even hear it. Yeah. Oh, they hear it. Okay. All the comments. Comment if the water bothers you. <laughs> yeah. Comment if it doesn't bother you. And you know what? We'll take your comment next door and we'll show it we'll to show the owners. <laughs> and we'll be like, Look. Let's take it to our landlord. Oh, yeah. We're going to write a formal complaint. Look at our, these are our customers. <laughs> <laughs>
it's gone right. on long enough. Yeah. We'll yeah. See this has gone on long enough. See you guys. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Bye.